Welcome to today's 3D print. Let's talk about ornaments. I love ornaments. Who doesn't like ornaments? Especially nice looking, fast print, easy ornaments. This is one of my new test prints whenever I make a new filament review now, because it's fast and cool. So, new ornament. I'll have a link down below for where to find this, but this is a whole bunch of the filaments that I've been playing with lately. So this, for example, is the um, Zyro Transparent Purple. This is a new Amazed 3D Transparent Purple. This is just generic white done on a Modern Price Mini. This is a, from Refilament. It is a recycled PET filament, and it is beautiful. This is nylon. I actually got printing with nylon, but I ran into one small problem. Brittle. Apparently, I discovered how to fix this already. You have to print hot. If the previous layer isn't hot enough, the filament will still flow, but it won't properly bond to the previous layer. So you've got to print it a little hotter, and ideally in an enclosure. But until then, you've got to slow down and print it hot. You need the new molten filament coming out to heat up and remolten the previous layer so that the layers will bond properly. That's going to keep falling over, so I'm going to leave it over there. This is the new winter... Um, winter fill from Protopasta. Uh, I do have another one down here actually. It's in my secret stash. Hang on. I was trying to figure out where I hid that little bugger. But this is the Candy Apple Red from Protopasta. And it is a truly beautiful plastic. I would have, if you can justify spending that kind of money on a filament, I would advise going and grabbing a roll of this. It is really beautiful this is the kind of filament that you don't use you put it aside and you save it for truly little special touches that you need here and there because it's very beautiful so is the winter fill but not quite as unbeautiful as the candy apple red um, this is gold happens this is uh, polyalchemy uh, nightshade um, this is Esun's PLA transparent blue. This is Shun Plastic, S C H O N dot com plastics orange that they sent me. And this is Zyro's bright twinkling blue. But of course, these little ornaments aren't enough. So I had to go bigger. So this was actually printed on the Ender 2. All these were printed on the Ender 2 except for. This one, which is printed on the ANET E12, and this one, which is printed on the Monoprice Select Mini. And you want to run away, don't you? This one was printed on the Ender 2, and it was printed in Polyalchemy Dark Pink Elixir. And here's something really cool you can do. Up to about this size, this works. If you go bigger, this doesn't work. But I put a three-layer brim at least 10 or 15 layer uh, perimeters deep to make sure this attaches properly to the bed, especially with some of these more finicky filaments like the PET and the nylon and stuff like that. So, as you make it bigger, make that thicker. Make it four layers. You break it off and you stick it inside with a zip tie. And now that becomes your way of hanging the thing. The zip tie won't fit inside the hole, so it stays outside. And the brim, once it unfolds inside, it doesn't come out. So, you have a captive hook that you don't have to worry about losing. So you can hang up your ornaments without having to use any more outside materials except some zip ties. That's pretty cool. But that actually came out quite beautiful. I was pleased by that. You start to lose, you see in the first half here you have that perfect resolution of the Ender 2, but you start to lose that right about here and it gets pretty bad here. Most people would consider this perfectly fine, but that bugs me a bit. But that's because the only attachment point is down here. So as... <laughs> Cute, huh? I think you can see me put it in. So as it prints from this tiny little point here, it starts to wobble just slightly, just from the drag of the next layer drawing on top of the previous layer. And that little bit of drag moves it just a hair and just enough to mess up the perfect lines. But of course, I couldn't stop there. Oh, no, 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 no. We had to go much bigger. <laughs> yes. Zyro Transparent Purple, and Zyro Twinkling Bright Red. Oh yeah. Enormous. So here is stock size, and there is mega size. <laughs> These were both done on the CR10 
regular CR10, not the CR10S. And you can see just how massive these things are. If the if this was two halves, you could put my head inside there. <laughs> it's big, and it's very pretty. And it's not all success. There are also failures, and the failures. First failure. Second failure. Third failure. Before I finally gave up. Um, two of these failed because the filament broke. One, the it let go from the bed, and that was my fault. Oops, sorry. You probably heard that nice and loud. I just hit the mic. The I found a new problem with the CR10. It's something that they're going to have to look into fixing. I believe there's actually printable solutions already available. The filament detection sensor. It friction fits and slides onto the bracket for the extruder. So you slide your filament through it, you put it through your extruder, and then you slide it over the end of the bracket, and it just friction fits on there. The problem is over time it comes loose. And what was happening, I thought I had bad filament. I thought this roll of filament I got was just bad, but it wasn't. The, as it would retract and pull back and retract and pull back and retract and pull back, it would work that filament detection sensor loose. And when it finally worked it loose, it would cock up at an angle like this. Because the filament sensor is a box like this with a hole that the filament comes out of and then the bracket continues forward. So the actual center of gravity for this component is back here, but the bracket's up here, which means when this filament pulls on it and it's not attached, it tends to cock like this and pull in like that. And that hard angle, when it pulls, cracks the filament. Basically, it's jamming up because the filament detection center came loose. And of course, the filament is still inside the filament detection sensor, so it continues printing on its merry way. It doesn't know that the filament actually broke because it breaks after the filament detection sensor. Easy solution, which I'm probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole right through the filament sensor and the um, bracket. Just take a Dremel and just drill a hole straight through all three layers: the sensor bracket, metal bracket, and the other side of the sensor bracket. And I'm just going to take a, a small finishing nail with a big cap on it. You know the the finishing nails that have the big head on them. Snip the end of it off and just drop it in like a cotter pin. So that will lock the filament sensor to the bracket, so it can't work itself loose. That's an easy solution. You have, there are printable solutions where you move the circuit board into a, a unit that's all one piece, so obviously it can't come loose. But yeah, I will have a link down below for these ornaments. They are pretty cool. You guys have a great day.